And we're back. Same bat time, same bat channel. So yeah, Animation Junkie, not with the green screen and with a sidekick this time. This will be a first, um, possibly an only. We'll see how bad it goes. Um, in case you folks don't know, this is my friend Ryan Daly. He sometimes shows up for the Council of Geeks Roundtable Talks. And we just finished watching Batman Return of the Caped Crusaders. I've been depressed a lot this week. <laughs> uh, just some stuff going on in the world and everywhere. And... I didn't know if there was a form of escapism that could actually take me out of that and make me feel good. This did. <laughs> it is the 60s Batman show taken to an extreme that they only could not do at the time because they couldn't afford to do what, what they're able to do in animation. Right. But everything that goes on in it is true to that show. It absolutely is. And the script for this thing is incredible. Like. Everything from the 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 hyperbolic dialogue and all like the just so much alliteration, the dump trucks, of alliteration and adjectives <laughs> and adverbs and everything that they just throw into this thing, and it's lovingly crafted. It is like a love letter to this, but it doesn't feel like an outsider's take on this. It never feels like it's mocking the source material. Oh, it it pushes certain things yeah. slightly harder than like it it pulls a few more jokes with say the zap pow sure. things like they had it say spork. They're pushing the buttons a little, but they're never it's never a mockery. It's right. not pointing at it and going, "Man, this was dumb." It's pointing at it and going, "Man, this was great." Right. And let's just do it a little harder. I think things flew over my head. I think there were some inside jokes that I missed. I think there were some gags that might have landed a little bit harder if I was freshly immersed in the series. But you didn't need to come into this with prerequisite knowledge. You didn't. Yeah. I, I mean, to see where I'm coming from, I never saw the Egghead episode, but I know about it. Right. I never saw the Bat-Tusi episode, <laughs> but I know about it. So right. just knowing that stuff just yeah. gives you basically the ammunition you need to, to soak all this up. Right, right. And I think they probably had in mind that if you had only seen the movie, which is pretty readily available, yeah, you can get this. I mean, that's why they chose the villains that they chose. They went with the quartet of Joker, Riddler, Penguin, and Catwoman. It was the same group of villains from that movie. Obviously, the the actors who are still alive, which are Burt, Burt Ward, um, Adam West, Adam West, and Julie Newmar, and Julie Newmar as Catwoman, they were brought back. Before we get to them, what were your thoughts on the ones who were obviously doing imitations? So I, we were getting people doing imitations of right. Frank Gorshin's Riddler and um, uh, Burgess Meredith, Burgess Penguin, Meredith's and Penguin. Cesar Romero's yeah. Joker. Um, I liked all of them. Um, well, one thing that I did mention to you was that I felt like the the Joker. For I think they got the laugh pretty well, and there were a few lines where I was like, "That that feels very much like Cesar Romero." But there were just times where I felt like I was like. This feels like they're doing an impression of a Spanish accent that they're trying to hide as not a Spanish accent, which, considering we never got a close-up where you could see a mustache, I was lips, I was kind was, of hoping. Me, me too, me too. But that was like the next best thing. I was like, this sounds like a, they're trying to be a Spanish actor, trying not to sound like a Spanish actor. So there, there was enough of it where I was like, that's a weird enough voice that it, it did feel appropriate. I don't know if it's as authentic as it could be, but it felt right. Well, in I terms thought, of authentic, I thought the the Riddler was the Riddler crazy authentic. Did a great it job. sounded just like sounded him. just like Gorshin. As for the Penguin, it's a Burgess Meredith's voice, and that was really easy to copy. I think anybody can kind of do an I mean, impression of that. Meredith himself was had a really heavy mm -hmm. affectation doing right, that. And, right. and it's always easier to do an impression of a put-on voice than do an impression sure. of somebody's natural voice. Right. Uh, Commissioner Gordon and Chief <laughs> O'Hara. Bagora. <laughs> the, the, the guy did the Chief O'Hara just... <laughs> Again, that, that was one where they were like, boy, we're coming really close to just making fun of you. But again, it felt loving. I'm not sure I want to talk too much about the plot because one of the fun things for me was sort of seeing where it went. Yeah. Um, because one of the concerns I had going in was, are they going to get a feature length? out of this. Can people who didn't actually write this stuff at the time and are basically doing fan fiction, can they string that for a feature length film? And I think they did. I, I will say I think it felt like there was an extra act tacked on at the end. I, I agree. There were three parts where I felt like they logically could have wrapped it up and then they just said 
nope, we're not quite done. We're going to do another thing. Well, they had what really felt like it was the climax that the story pretty much straight had been building to. Right. right. And then it had about another 10 minutes after that. Yeah, which was they, sort like, of a moving chase battle scene yeah. that could have been cut. It, it wasn't bad. I think it's the latest iteration of what I think is the most consistent weaknesses with the DC animated films, which mm -hmm. is they're very stringent about a 75 minute running time. And I've seen that hurt movies in both directions. Mm -hmm. I have seen movies that would have been better done in short form, sure. padded out with stuff that didn't work. The Killing Joke being the best example of that. And I've seen other stories that would have been better if they had just put in five, you know, five, ten more minutes worth of stuff to let stuff breathe just a little bit. Flashpoint Paradox, I think, is a good example okay. of that one. Um, okay, back to the voice actors, the three returning cast. Yes. Adam West, Burt Ward, Julie Newmar. I will say, I think of the three, Julie Newmar was the weakest link. She was, she was still good, but I think, um, well, I think... For one thing, I don't know if she's done much voice acting. There was something about her delivery on some lines, not all of them, right. but on some lines, it felt like she, she like she wasn't quite in the moment because she wasn't there physically. Right, right. And I will say the character of Catwoman and some of her dialogue was phenomenal. Was yes, just, they had so much fun writing Catwoman. <laughs> I guess it was just a thing where I could, I could kind of hear the age of the actress, and I was just like that that. The sound of her voice, just the pitch, everything doesn't match what I'm seeing. Mm. And at first, there were there were times in the beginning when uh, we were looking at uh, Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson out of costume, where I thought the same was going to be true for Batman and Robin. Like there were a few times where I was just like, "Boy, I'm not sure if these are going to sound right." But maybe that like that kind of feeling only lasted like the first two or three minutes. And you get acclimated pretty quick. Now I I will say that Adam West does sound older than he did at the time, but he's supposed to be comparatively older anyway, so it still works. Burt Ward sounded like he was still mm -hmm. 16 years old. Yeah, yeah. I... Or as much as he sounded like a 16-year-old yes. in the old yeah. show. Yeah, he sounded as much of a teenager now as he, he did, did back then. 50 years ago. Holy crap. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Neither of those two have lost anything in terms of their delivery. No. They know exactly how to read those lines right. yeah. and exactly how to make them work. Even, especially in the case of Batman, even as the character was brought into things to do things that he never did on the mm -hmm. show. Other than feeling like it might have gone a little bit too long. Uh, and I, I really think that might be my only complaint with it. And that is my only um, complaint. And even when I felt like it went too long, it wasn't boring. No. It never like lost my interest. Not to say that the thing's too long, it's that the way that it's paced, it hit its natural end before the end of its runtime. I agree. Great time, and I would highly recommend it. Um, definitely one of the much better times that I've had with anything that's come out of DC Animation lately. This is the antidote. <laughs> To, every, to everything that was wrong with the killing joke. So this this was wonderful. Yeah, I agree. So thank you for... Well, thanks for coming on. Don't know if I'll ever have anyone on um, for an Animation Junkie review again, but thanks for joining me, Ryan. Thank you. And um, I guess that'll wrap it up, folks. So uh, as for me, I will be back as soon as I can get my next fix.